All right, so Carlos Alcaraz has beaten Stefano Tsitsipas 6-3, 6-4 in the Barcelona final. And honestly, it wasn't close. It wasn't close. The scoreline makes it seem closer than it actually was. But after Stefanos got that first break, it was kind of all Carlitos after that. So that's pretty shocking in my mind. We had the number one and number two seeds playing. And Carlos really, I think, put the tour on notice again, saying, I'm the dog to beat on the clay service. And that's really interesting going into a Roland Garros where Nadal has not played on clay yet. Djokovic has lost twice on clay and just pulled out of Madrid. So we're going to talk about all of that, what it means for the tour, how this match went, Carlos beating Stefanos, and what the kind of positioning is going into the French Open. Because honestly, it's super interesting. So big match up there um, between Carlos and Sistapas. And honestly, it lacked a little bit of the intrigue that I think we were hoping for. So we're going to break it down here on The Slice. Thanks for being here. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, Carlitos on clay in Batalonia, his home. You got to expect that he would feel comfortable and feel good out there. And boy, did he feel good and look good. 26 winners, seven unforced errors. Just r robotic, automatic. I don't know what else to say. Just unbelievable. Just great stuff from... from Carlitos and Steph didn't, you know, we'll look into it. We'll look at the numbers here. We'll look at the, the trends that I saw. Um, but yeah, before that, thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing. If you have not yet, that helps us out and shout out to our sponsor, cool bet who, if you are going to responsibly and respectfully bet on tennis, use cool bet. They're our sponsor. They're supporting the show. And if you go to the link below, sign up uh, and whatever you, and use the code, the slice, whatever you deposit, they'll just double. So if you put in 50 bucks, they'll put in 50 bucks for you to use. Uh, and if you want to DM us on Instagram, we can send you a code, a special code for 50 free dollars as well. So if you want to respectfully and responsibly bet on the tennis and get in the game, use cool bet, shout out cool bet. Um, also shout out Brad Stein. Just, we just dropped a big interview on the channel coach of Tommy Paul, Brad Stein. We just had like an hour and a half chat. Uh, full interview. I'll try and link it here, but go find it on our channel. Uh, lots. We talk about Djokovic, why, what surprised him the most playing Djokovic in the semifinals of Australia. Who's going to be major winners in the future here? How does he think Tommy Paul matches up with Carlitos and Sinner and Holgerun and the bunch of the, the new gen? Um, super interesting chat there. So go check that out. So Carlos Alcaraz putting the tour on notice. You know, it's like a, a year ago, when I think I made a video in Europe where I said, you know, Carlos is the most exciting player in tennis. Like that's a fact. And that's after he won Miami 2022. Uh, obviously he won Indian Wells here and then, um, you know, did well in Miami, but you know, now he's gone from just the upstart, you know, a year ago being the upstart player um, to being the, you know, other than Djokovic, the absolute King. And this year has been a little bit of a mystery because he didn't play. They haven't even played in the same tournament yet, Djokovic and Carlos, which you probably know, but it is ridiculous. So I cannot wait till the next time they play. Hopefully they're both healthy. Djokovic, that'll be a question mark. And we're going to talk about that coming up here in a sec. But more about this match. You know, last year we saw the classic, you know, the Stefanos-Carlos beef a little bit where I think Stefanos was really feeling like, you know, he was the next heir to the clay throne. And then this young kid, Carlos, comes in and he's beating him. And he had like a 2-0 and loss head-to-head -head against him coming into Barcelona. And then Stefanos classically tried to smash or hit Carlos with the ball. Carlos gave him the stare down. There was some fire. We like that. We like that type of sauce here on the show. Now the head-to-head -head was coming was 3-0 for Carlos coming into this match. And it looked... Right off the bat, you know, Stefano started well. He broke, I think, in the second game to go up 2-1. But then Carlos instantly broke back. But it just looked like there was an underdog out there, which is weird when you got a 19-year-old playing Stefano Sitsipas, who's been like the golden boy for a long time, who I continue to believe in on the surface and in general that he can beat anyone on the tour. But 
he's really not showing that he can against the top two guys, which is obviously Djokovic and Alcaraz right now. Um, yeah, and that was proven again today for now. So what's the scenario? What's this? Let's just, first, we're going to talk about this match. Then we're going to talk about Roland Garros favorites and we're going to talk about Djokovic and Nadal injuries. So stay tuned to the, to the end. But in this match, like I said, Stefano's got off to a quick start and then Carlos just got on the offensive. And it feels like whenever or when Carlos got offensive in the match, it was just he could do whatever he wanted. Whenever he got a ball that he could be come forward with his weight on, he was hitting winners. His forehand was perfect today. 27, yeah, again, 26 winners, seven unforced errors. Stefanos was like eight and eight, um, you know, 50% ratio, not bad, but just so much firepower coming from Carlos from the ground uh, that it was just unstoppable. And it really felt like, now you look at Stefanos, you're like, what could he do to hurt Carlos on the clay? And to me, it's just like he has to almost go flat line, like red line. Like his best defense is an insane offense. Like he started the match, he has to serve unbelievably well and just come forward and finish points and do that for an entire match, which seems impossible. And it might be impossible against a guy like Carlos Alcaraz, the best mover on tour, the biggest from the ground on tour. Um, yeah, what do you do? What do you do? And I think... By the end of the match, he looked at Stefanos and his dad in the box, and they were kind of, what do you do? And that's depressing. He's the fifth seed, fifth ranked player in the world, second seed, you know, 2021 French Open finalist, arguably should have won that match. And now he's just, looks like he's second fiddle or third fiddle on clay, um, or maybe even fourth if there's Nadal's playing well. So, Stefanos has got to, you know, he's got to get his confidence back. He needs a big win. I, I was thinking if he could win this match, that would have been a huge, huge win for him. But he was really never close to winning this match, was he? So let's just take a look at the, let's take a look at the stats here. A bit closer of the match. Service stats. You got Alcaraz on the left, Stefanos on the right. The serving, serve rating was much higher for, for Alcaraz. But I think they take into the, the win percentage of, of points. So, I mean, first service percentage, ridiculous, 77% for Carlos. So that's A right there. Doesn't give uh, Stefanos much of a chance. 57% for Stefanos probably trying to go big on that first serve. And then 81% first serve points won on his first serve and 73% on the second, which he only had 11 second serve points in general. And Stefanos is 70% on his first serve, pretty good. And then only 48% on his second serve, which is... Just continue, just put so much pressure on you. Um, the return rating, gr good for Carlos. Again, those are obviously intertwined, the return and the serve. But this return rating for, for, for Stefanos was just not there. He just couldn't do anything. Ball kicks up so high on this clay with Carlos's heaviness of shot. Just a bad matchup style-wise for Stefanos. But at the end of the day, you wouldn't think that because he's on clay has been so good. So now kind of in my, in this, in this matchup now, my thinking is almost Stefanos would have more of a chance on a quick service where surface, where his four, first serve and forehand one, two punch is bigger than Carlos's and he could get, get more purchase out of it and do more damage against Carlos. But on a, a service like this, where Carlos is so comfortable, so balanced all the time, just really didn't seem like Steph had much to do. So yeah, it was six three six four, but it didn't really seem close after the first rebreak there, and that's the case. That's what happened. So, what are your guys' thoughts on that? What's your slice on that match? My slice is that it's it's scary, and that uh, Carlos is when he's playing like this, he's clear and above anyone else on tour. But how do we know? Because we haven't seen Djokovic and Carlos play in the same tournament, both play well and play each other in twenty twenty three, and that is a damn shame. So that takes me to the next segment, I guess. Roland Garros favorite, is it Carlitos Alcaraz? I think that's fairly safe to say now based on the fact that Rafa Nadal has not played on clay yet. He's still injured. This is like the, the worst it's looked as far as form and playing and injuries for Rafa in a long time. Djokovic just pulled out of Madrid after losing to Dusan Lajevic. No offense to Dusan Lajevic, but that's not who you want to be losing to, even though he is playing well, and I think he just won the tournament. Um and then also losing to Musetti and Monte Carlo again, not shocking because he usually doesn't play well there. But the injury, the elbow injury possibility, he why is he pulling out? It must be to rest his arm 
that's not looking good going to the French Open, which is now like a month away. And Stefanos, Carlos just easily beat in Barcelona. So you got to think, in my opinion, you got to put Carlos above all three of those guys. And it's not like last year where you're like, oh my gosh, he's running on like rookie fumes. No, he's already won a major, Carlos. He's already won a major. He's beaten all three of those guys. And to me, there's no lot, there's no more, oh, he'd get up in a match and he would get tight and then lose. No, he's a he's he's a guy who's won a major now. And now he's going into this major, the French Open, with the best form, obviously, the lack the least amount of injuries and the least amount of mental damage like Stefanos. Because I do think if Stefanos can play his best, he can he can hang with Carlos a lot more um, than he did today. Carlos played great. I don't think Stefanos played his best. But a lot, I think all of Savannah's lack of playing good was due to Carlos. So to me, yes, Carlos is a clear Roland Garros favorite um, at this point. Madrid will have something to do with it. Again, Djokovic and Nadal both won't be there. So the only other tournament really leading up to it is potentially Rome, which has always been a bit of a weird one. Anyways, um, you know, Djokovic will win it. Nadal will win it. Doesn't seem to really affect Roland Garros that much. So... We'll see. I wonder if Carlos will play both of them or he might rest. He's always been smart with that. But yeah, Roland Garros is going to be a big, big question mark. One of the most open tournaments, I think, in a long time as well. So we'll see. But that was huge. Carlos Alcaraz beats Stefano Sitsipas fairly easily in Barcelona. Big time from Carlos. What did you guys think? Let us know. That's the show. That's the slice on Carlos. He's put the t- n- tour on notice and he's looking absolutely ominous so we'll see who can stop the carlitos train but that's the slice let me know your thoughts down below and check out the interview with brad stein link below and sign up for cool bet for free cash ola we'll see you guys next time (laughs) 